Have you ever wondered why you're not able to get the Word of God to work in your life? Well, the wondering stops here and now. In this podcast, we will answer these questions through supernatural revelation of the Word of God as we meditate the Word together. My name is Craig Venn, and this is the Sunday Recap Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another amazing episode of the uh, of the Sunday Recap Podcast. My name's Craig, and I'm uh, glad to be here with you again. It's been a while since we've had one of these episodes, and once uh, since we've had a little bit of time together um, on this podcast, on this channel. And um, no excuses, just been a busy time and and uh, and a lot going on. We've seen um, multiple things happening here at KBM with uh, with the the things that the Lord are do- is doing. Some of it has been some challenging times and difficult times, uh, as most of you might know and and probably do know. Um, Apostle's brother, um, uh, Pastor Omar's Omar's son, passed away, and. Um, and so there was obviously a lot that was going on during that time, very challenging time for the family. So please keep them in prayer um, and keep believing God for them and 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 um, and strengthening strengthening them in prayer so that uh, you know they can keep um, keep moving forward. It's a very very difficult time. It's not as easy as it looks. It's a very powerful, strong family that in the anointing and in the Word. Um, but it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, so, so please be mindful and prayerful for them as they uh, as they move through this difficult season in their lives. Um, and also, you know, a lot going on at KBM has has uh, has made it challenging to be on uh, and with this every morning. But I know and I've heard uh, that people want it. People want these. Um, people want these uh, sort of recaps of what we do on Sundays um, and what Apostle preaches on Sundays and he is preaching a dynamic message every Sunday. It is super powerful. So those of you who have not been able to make it uh, to those or have not been in in those meetings, please don't don't, uh, neglect the gathering of the saints. The Bible says don't neglect the gathering of the saints. Um, even as we see that great day draw near, what day is that? That's the day of the Lord. That's the day of the returning of Jesus. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to be out of sorts. You don't want to be unprepared um, for the presence of God. You don't want to be unprepared for the presence of Jesus when He shows up and uh, when He comes to collect His bride, uh, because that is going to put you in a very, very compromised place. You don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be not ready. So how do we be ready? We be connected to the body. We stay in the word. We stay in prayer. We're not lone rangers. We're not staying at home and saying, oh, well, I'm just going to stay at home and do my thing over there. No, 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 no. We, we are not lone rangers. We are connected to the body of Christ. We are, we are, we are members of the local church. We are submitted to the leadership of that church. We allow God to speak through his authority into our lives. Uh, we're growing through that, through disciplines and corrections of the word of God, of our, of our pastors and teachers and prophets and evangelists and apostles. And they're just pouring into our lives and making sure that we're walking correctly and circumspectly and everything is being done decently in order. So that when that day comes, um, that we're ready and we're the best we can be. Um, and uh, so so this is why we do what we do. And we also know that um, revelation knowledge does not come without meditation of the word. And that's what this channel has been about for, for so long, is that to help, we're helping people meditate the word of God. We're helping people stay in the word um, through these different Bible studies so that we can be meditating, getting the revelations that we need, uh, and staying solid on the Word of God. So that being said, enough said, let's get down into the Word. Get your Bible real quick. Um, and uh, let's let's have a look here. I just really just restarted this laptop before I started, so <laughs> I have to just get a few things ready. But we are ready to go. The, the Scripture reference for... Uh, Sunday, the Sunday past was Genesis 12. So let's just flip over to Genesis 12 if you can. Genesis chapter number 12, verse 1. Ah, yes, Jesus. Thank you. I love the word of God. Here we go. Let me just share the screen so you can see what I'm seeing. 
All righty. And there we go. Genesis 12, verse 1. Uh, and I want to put this so we can see the Afrikaans as well. Genesis 12, 1. Let's just uh, compare it like that. That's it. Now the Lord God said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And the Yere dan Abram Hase Han Ye ate your land and ate your family and ate your father Sahis. Not the land, but at your soul vase. Let's pray together and get into this Bible study today. Heavenly Father, we give you glory and praise and worship and honor. We set ourselves before the word to be taught by the word and to receive revelation from heaven. And Jesus will give you all the glory, the praise, the worship, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody that was online said amen. All right. So I kind of actually, this is this is a, sort of the first time I am really paying attention here to the Afrikaans of this. And I like the way it says it. In the Yeret an Abram Chan Chan ye eight yo land in eight yo family. It doesn't say it like that in the English. It says, just it says, um, get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto land that I'll show you. But it's actually saying in the Afrikaans, go out of your family. Um, go out, go out of that, go out of our out of your father's house and and go to a land and unto a land that I will show you. And I, I think, you know, for most of us, um, you, you, we 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 have so much reliance and so much comfort in family, and it's good. It's it's good. It's it's really um, so important to to have that family structure in place. God said, "All the families of the earth shall be blessed in you, Abram." And the, there's a, a number of scriptures, and I believe in the power of family. Um, but when family becomes our source. Then we have we have some issues. A source of joy is not family. A source of security is not family. A source of income and financial security and stability is not family. It's Jesus. Jesus must always be that source. And when when that becomes the source, when that becomes the place, when that becomes the thing, that's when God says, "All right, I need you to." I need you to, in your heart, you need to start pulling your heart away from that place. And I want to be that source. I want to be that place. I want to be that thing because I will provide for you better than your family will provide for you. I'll provide healing and comfort and peace and deliverance. I will provide for you on a greater level than what your family can. And the thing with family, is oftentimes uh, influence can be different from what the word is. And sometimes, and particularly when you're a leader, when you're the Joseph of your, of your family, um, you love your family and, and so on and so forth. But God is saying, I want you to come out from that place. You're going to have to go through the pit, through part of his house, through the prison, and then you're going you're gonna to land up in the palace eventually in Pharaoh's house. But it doesn't come easy. And he's saying, I want you to come out from your father's house, come out from that place and leave there, leave there and go to a place that I will show you. Um, and, and, and I want you to understand that, that there is a place that you've seen and, and watch this. Now, in fact, let's, let's bring it up again. Let's bring it up again so that you can see it and understand what I'm saying. Look at me, it says, uh, and go into a place that I will show you. Let's just scroll down here a little bit. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. It's in, in that place, in Exal, yo a groot nasi mark, in yo sien, in yo nam so groot mark, dat jy a sien sal wees. It's in that place that I'm going to bless you. Now, you've, you've experienced limited, limited blessing in the place that you are at the moment. There's a limited form of blessing in that place. And this word, don't get me wrong, this word is for everybody. This isn't for some people that are still kind of connected. And, oh, just This is for everybody because there is always a deeper place to move to. There is always a greater place in God to move to. There's always more to be experienced. There's always more to be done. 
And so he's saying, go to that land that I will show you and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. It's in that place. Now, what you've experienced now initially in this initial time where you haven't left the place that you were supposed to leave, where you haven't left um, all that you were supposed to leave and, and you, you've stayed connected, you've experienced a certain blessing. But God is saying you haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything compared to what I am going to do in your life if you will be obedient, if you will leave that place and go to the place that I will show you. Go to the place in him. Die plek in die jir, in die woord, in die gees, in gebed. That place in God that I will show you. There I will, I will empower you to become the dominant force. I will empower you to be fruitful and to multiply. There I'm going to, I'm going to empower you to fulfill assignment. You're not even going to know assignment until you leave that place. Until you leave that place of comfort where the wrong things are your source, where the wrong things are the, 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 the comfort zone is now God in your life. Now, now, you might think, wait, 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 you can't say that. I am saying that. The comfort zone becomes God. The comfort zone becomes the, the source. It becomes, it becomes the dictator. Um, the comfort zone becomes the director. It becomes the leader. I am led by my comfort. I am led by what feels comfortable. Instead, I'm being led by the Spirit of God and being led by the word of God. And now that is why the comfort zone is becoming God. And until you leave that place, you have a dual deity in your life. There is a dual God in your life until you say, oh, right, that's why I'm leaving this place because this place is way too comfortable. This place is, it's, it's too, it's, and God has not, not got a problem with the comfort of it. He's got a problem with the fact that the comfort is making you lie down. It's make, making you complacent. Your God is down. You're not praying like you used to pray. You're not in the word like you used to be. You're not fasting like you used to fast. You're not on the edge like you used to be. You're not, your conversations are becoming laced with incorrect things and nuances and, 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 uh, and innuendo that, that, that is, is, is not pleasing to God. It's not the purity of your life is starting to be overshadowed. The purity of your life is starting to be compromised where it wasn't like that. And God is saying, I want you to leave that place. I want you to leave that place. Your father's house, your family, that's just talking about the influence that has come down from generation to generation to generation. It's been, the conversations are like this. Where we live is like this. How we do things is like this. And God is saying, I want you to leave that place. Separate yourself from that thing and go to the place in the word of God Go to the place in the spirit of God. Go to the place in the promises of God and in the covenant of God. Go to that place where you're meditating the word night and day. Go to that place where your conversations are godly conversations. Go to the way, that place where your presentation of yourself is a godly presentation of yourself. Go to that place in God where the anointing is on your life again, where the flow of the anointing is on your life again where the godliness is there again and the purity is there again and the holiness is there again. Go to that place where your worship is different, where your giving is in that place that it should be, where your obedience is where it should be. Those things, where, where, where there is a fiery hot fervor for the Lord, go to that place and there, there I will bless you. There I will make your name great. There I will cause you to be a blessing. It's in that place. It's not in the place where, where I'm just staying in my comfort zone. Why is the comfort zone a problem? Because you're not willing to do the work that it requires. I see people all the time, family. I, I, I see them all the time. When everything is going well, their prayer life implodes. Their prayer life collapses. Their, their study time in the word of God, their fasting, their, all of it just becomes complacent and there is no... Um, there is no urgency. There is no purpose. There is no drive in their lives. Other things are always more important. Whereas when there's trouble, 
now the prayer is intense and the fasting is intense and now we're seeking the edge the edge the line that place with god that place i'm i'm looking for that place i'm i'm seeking to go why, why would you wait and tr- trouble hits is his presence not enough is the fellowship of the holy spirit not enough to draw you into that space and that time and that environment where you can find the edge of assignment where you can get on the edge of what god is doing in your life is his presence and pleasing him not enough when was that not enough now we become complacent we go and we sit and we say okay i'm okay here i'm happy here and we're not driving towards that place of purpose and our focus becomes broken apostle said the other day the only reason why men fail or women fail is because of broken focus mark those who break your focus mark the distractions in your life mark them and leave those relationships leave them because they're not worth it they're pulling you away from the assignment mark that and leave it exit that strategically exit it even if it collapses strategically exit that situation so that you can drive towards that place go to a land that i will show you but he he's not going to show you until you leave this place until you've spent the time and say okay god i see this is my comfort zone i am in a disastrous state of comfort i the, the, i'm too comfortable here everything i know how everything works everything is done the way that it's supposed to do but now i've got to leave it and this is what apostle was saying we're saying over the last couple of weeks how how god was challenging is this the place is this the place that you're supposed to be in is this the place that i showed you or is there a greater place now that the, when you hear that in 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 church you go oh my gosh is apostle leaving that's not the issue that's not the issue if that's the issue for you then your salvation and the anointing on your life is a very low salvation is a very weak sort of thing going on no 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 if that's where you are you can't be there oh my gosh this person's gonna leave then my whole world's gonna implode yes if if that were to happen if a pastor had to leave and you backslide then your your salvation is questionable i have been there I, that's why i know how i can talk about this if you backslide because your man of god is working in other parts of the world then your salvation is weak then you have a real problem and you have that is only a question that you can ask you you're the only person that can answer that question for yourself but i am challenging you today because without a prayer life without a word life without oil in your lamp without seed in the ground without all these things ha- having happened you will backslide for the lack of a man that's why the disciplines of a christian life a disciplined prayer life a disciplined word life a disciplined uh, fasting life a disciplined giving life a disciplined church attendance life fellowship with the saints these are disciplines the habits of successful christian living these are the habits of successful christian living so that you're in the habit it's second nature that's what it means to be born again you take on the habits of successful christian living that that is what it is it's not yes your spirit man becomes recreated and all that happens but you have to start learning the habits of successful christian living so that it doesn't matter what hits or what there's no drift when the storm comes you don't drift you're anchored in place when the storm passes you set sail and you move again when the storm hits you hit you drop anchor and you are anchored in place and then whatever happens there's no drift you'll only go as far as that anchor will allow you and then you move on but that's what the habits are no habits no disciplines no regular routine christian life none of that in place when the storm hits or that critical person leaves your life guess what happens you're washed away you're absolutely washed away and it's a disaster what happens in your life because you haven't created the habits so 
when you leave that place, what is you're going to start learning the habits. One of the habits that, that, well, let's talk about that. Yes, Lord, let's talk about that. When Israel left Egypt, they left the place. They left, their fathers were born there, and there were generations that had gone on in Egypt. And now, and it was comfortable, even though it was, it was tyranny, and it was slavery, and it was murder, and it was genocide, and there was just so much going on in Egypt. But they knew what to expect. Now they leave. Now they have to learn the habits of going to pick up manna every morning. That has to become a habit to go and get your manna every morning and twice as much uh, on a Friday than on the, the Saturday, on the Sabbath. You're not taking, uh, you're not going out there to fetch bread. All right. So that's a habit that has to be learned. Successful Christian living isn't for the lucky and the strong and the favored. And the favor comes because of the right habits. Favor comes because of right habits. The habits that dictate how to survive when you leave your father's house. That's gold. That's gold, family. The habits that dictate successful. Christian leaving, when you leave your kindred, leave your father's house and go to the place that I will show you and there I will bless you. How do I survive in between Christian habits? The successful uh, Christian life is dictated by habits, dictated by disciplines, disciplines that create habits. Once the habit is formed, it's no longer a discipline. It's a habit. It's a way of life. This is how I live. This is how I do what I do. But if you don't do that, then between leaving that place and entering the land that he will show you and there he blessing you, you're going to have a disastrous journey. And that many times is the reason why I never leave, because I don't know how to do that in between space. I don't know how to I don't know how to survive in the in between space. And so I never leave there because I don't know how to how to survive in the journey to that place. So what's the deal is learn the habits of successful Christian living. And if you do that, the transition into the new place will be a natural process. That's just going to be a natural move from this place to that place. And when you land up in the place, that whole journey of collecting habits, it's called habit stacking. I'm collecting habit, collecting habit, collecting habit, boom, 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 boom. Now, when you hit the place that he said, go to the land that I show you, now your habits have dictated and determined that you are ready for that level of blessing. Because you've survived the journey and you've learned on the journey what it takes to live successfully in that place, that place of multiplication, that place of of increase, that place where where, where God does what he said he was going to do because he's faithful like that. He will say it. But but when he starts putting on you greater weights of the glory, greater weights of the anointing, greater weights of increase, greater weights of provision, greater weights of influence a greater weight um, of of the burden of the kingdom. Uh, all that gets put on you. But if you're not, if you've not learned the character and the habits that dictate that you won't mess it up in that place, he can't put it on you. That's why you never get to that place is because we're not learning along the journey. Blessing, blessing. And, and this is something that I wrote down in, 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 um, in the meeting, and we'll we'll tie it off over here. Blessing is not God's not picking who He blesses. We pick who He blesses. I pick whether I get blessed or not. I pick whether I am empowered or not. Because blessing is principle. Bless if I enact a principle, if I activate a principle, if I do this and do this and do that, it determines blessing. That means I'm the one making the choice as to whether I'm blessed or not. In my father's house. I've experienced a certain level of blessing, but he is saying, leave that comfort zone and go to the place that I will show you. And there I'll bless you. That journey in between is going to be determined and dictated by the habits that you learn. Am I going to do what is necessary to survive in those places with integrity, with good Christian living, with a deeper level of prayer? 
a, a more regular fasting life, a more regular word life. When pastor's preaching, I'm not distracted by 15 different things. I'm listening with that ear of I'm collecting my manna. I'm collecting my manna because this has got to feed me. It's no, I, now my life, my spiritual life is that much more focused. I'm intensely focused. I'm intensely connected to what the man of God is saying because I need to learn something that's going to take me to that place where he will show me. And there the increase is going to come on a supernatural level and I will be able to move into the things that God has called me to do. The sense of destiny and assignment will be fulfilled in that place. But I'm listening to this man right now because I'm going to need what he says to get me to that place. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I've enjoyed ministering it to you. I feel like I've been ministered to you and empowered, edified for my day ahead. Uh, and uh, we love you. We're praying for you. And we'll definitely see you on the next episode. Bye for now.